Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today we're going to talk about the five biggest mistakes you can make when building your soundproof studio. I think the number one fear that we all have when we're designing and building a soundproof room or studio is what if we spend all this money and it doesn't work? Hands down, that's definitely it. So these five mistakes that I'm talking about will help you not have that happen to you. You won't lose sleep as much at night and you'll be one step closer to understanding how to properly and professionally build a soundproof home recording studio. If that sounds good, stick around. Right before we jump in, I always wanna give you a free gift, which is my free soundproofing workshop. This is 45 minutes of in-depth training, teaching you exactly how to build a soundproof studio from the ground up or in an existing structure. So to check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's dive into this lesson today on the five biggest soundproofing mistakes. So number five, the fifth biggest mistake is using the wrong glass in your windows. I've had a lot of clients and a lot of people in our community come to me and ask and say, hey, can I just, you know, buy some, they're really like supposed to be acoustic windows. They sell them at the local window shop or like this window retailer online. And they look like a lot cheaper than buying some soundproof windows. I think I'm gonna go this direction just because I wanna save some money and it's easier. And that makes a lot of sense. You might even find like a, a double glazed window, a triple glazed window with three leafs with little air spaces in between and you're like a casement window too. All these things are like, oh yeah, this will be better for sound isolation. And it's true, they're better, but they're not good enough for a true soundproof room, especially for a home recording studio. And the main reason for that is that they all use float glass and float glass is one of the worst types of glass for sound insulation. We really want to use tempered glass or laminate glass. And ideally, I like to use a combination of the two on either side of my windows. And we want to use thicker glass. So we want to use somewhere uh, in the range of half an inch to three eighths of an inch thick tempered or laminate glass on each side of our, of our window opening in our walls to provide enough uh, sound isolation. The air gap between those windows is also really important for the effect of soundproofing on windows. And that means having a, a window uh, air gap of at least four inches. You know, a typical wall would maybe be four inches from outside to inside and a double wall system can be upwards of nine and a half inches. So getting our windows to span that gap is really important for increasing the sound isolation. So I highly recommend when you're designing and building your studio to either spend the extra money to buy actual soundproof windows from a reputable soundproofing supplier or to build your own like I do and I recommend a lot of my clients do um, by just sourcing the correct glass and building your own window frames and placing the glass in those window frames. So if you look at this diagram right here, you can see the design we did in my studio. Disregard the black lines that connect your two walls. You don't want to do that. That's just for showing the window opening. Um, but you can see here that I used the laminate and the um, the tempered glass, and then I used two different uh, thicknesses there, half inch and three eighths inch thick. And the soundproof windows are amazing. They're super, super quality and no sound gets through them. So highly recommend doing that. You will be so much happier and even if you spend a little bit more, more money on the front end, it's worth it in the long run. All right, number four, the fourth biggest mistake you can make is one that I made, uh, and that is putting a single heavy door uh, instead of using two communicating doors. So in my studio, I put one single heavy door. This was on the recommendation of Roger Weiss, whose book, uh, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros, I highly recommend. However, this is one of those areas where I think I'm leaning towards disagreeing with Rod on studio design. I think using a double door system is always gonna be preferable to a single heavy door. The reason mainly being is that we wanna mimic our double wall system on a with that SCC 63 rating. And this means having a heavy door on the outside wall and a heavy door on the inside wall with a nice air space in between, and then making sure that you buy quality soundproof seals. I highly recommend buying the seals from Zero International. They make some of the best soundproof acoustic seals on the market. So all of that plays into creating a powerfully 
awesome soundproof door and a single door no matter how heavy you make it is always going to have the the lack of the airspace and the two layers of mass and and creating that extra soundproofing that way so don't do the single door method even though it's in rod's book i highly recommend doing the communicating door method number three the third biggest mistake people make is thinking that they have to use mass loaded vinyl or green glue uh, i think mass loaded vinyl and green glue is like the most con confrontational topic on the internet when it comes to soundproofing. My take on it is if you don't have the budget, it's nice to have, but it's not critical to your soundproof wall. Let's take a look at this diagram. Some of you have may have seen this diagram or something like it on the internet before or in books. This diagram shows you all the way to the right. You can see our double wall system with two layers of drywall, a regular stud wall, airspace, two uh, things of insulation, or you can put insulation across the entire air gap, that's totally fine. And then another two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. There is no MLV and no green glue in this design, and you get an STC rating of 63, which is plenty soundproof for a home recording studio. Uh, getting windows and doors at an STC rating of 63 is plenty difficult to do. So a lot of times, you know, we'll put all this money and energy into our wall only for the sound to come through our doors and our windows and it's sort of a waste of time and money so that's why I say if we're gonna use green glue or mass loaded vinyl um, we're gonna have to also beef up our windows and our doors uh, to match the STC rating of our walls so keep that in mind uh, STC ratings of your ceilings as well try to match them all as best as you can so in a lot of cases I think the green glue nice to have the MLV nice to have but not critical to your soundproof wall design. Number two, the second biggest mistake that people make is not knowing their budget before they begin construction. I think I've seen so many of my clients and also other people out there in our community who are so eager to begin building or maybe you've been researching forever and you're just like, screw it. I just wanna get going. I don't wanna think about this anymore. Let's just start building this dang structure. And the problem is if you don't know your budget ahead of time, if you don't have an idea of what items you're gonna need and how much everything's gonna cost, the shipping costs, the cost of labor, uh, you're gonna end up spending more than you anticipated. Just in general, construction is expensive and most people don't want to think about the big numbers that it, that it could potentially cost. So you end up by nature, it's like psychology here, trying to get it as cheap as possible and there's like a threshold I think where people feel like okay this is good for me I've noticed that's in that $20,000 range uh, to $30,000 range a lot of people feel comfortable with that if you start pushing up to 40 50 60 thousand dollars it gets really uncomfortable even though that might be a more realistic budget for larger rooms uh, and doing it for under ten thousand dollars I think is almost impossible unless you're building like a 10 foot by 10 foot bedroom and you're going really cheap so keep that in mind as a general uh, rule of thumb for budgets but the real thing I'm saying here is line item everything in a spreadsheet know exactly how much you're gonna spend get accurate estimates from your contractors and, and you'll be good to go one other thing I'll say real quick that I think is funny is I've heard this so many times from people especially in our DIY community is like everyone knows a guy or a girl or somebody who can supply them with some material for cheap. So there's always like, oh, we can get glass from my buddy who knows a buddy who knows a buddy and they'll give us a discount or like there's always something like that. So you might think that, but I think it's wise to say, okay, what if that falls through? What am I gonna actually spend? And then the other side of that is with labor. Everybody has a brother-in-law uh, who's really handy and really good with construction, who's gonna come in for you know $15 an hour for free on the weekends and help you build this thing. Well, that might take two, three years because this guy is not going to actually want to do it for free or for really cheap. Um, so hiring quality workers, quality con construction uh, workers and contractors is something that's wiser to look into. And if it costs less, OK, awesome. Great. Uh, but don't think that you're going to have this amazing network of supplies and labor that's just super cheap. I mean, it happens some of the time, but not all the time. So keep that in mind as you are designing your studio. Focus on the budget first, construction second. Lastly, the number one thing, the number one mistake that people make when soundproofing is they do not install a ventilation system. So it's a really common mistake to think that your HVAC system, your heating and cooling system in your studio includes fresh air intake and uh, outtake. The problem is that our soundproof rooms are airtight 
and when we exhale, there's a buildup of CO2 naturally that happens. The more people in your room, say you've got a five piece band in a live room, uh, the amount of CO2 that will build up in there, especially the drummer who's huffing and puffing, um, is gonna build up really quickly and make the room unsafe uh, for just simply breathing in. The reason is that as we breathe in more CO2, not CO, remember this is carbon dioxide, we breathe in more of that, it can lead to headaches, uh, lethargia, fatigue. If you've ever been in a professional recording studio or even a home studio, and after about four hours in there, you start to feel sleepy and tired, the reason is that they probably don't have quality fresh air being sent in and out of the room. This is true for any room. It's a problem in office spaces, things like that. And it could even be a problem in your home, but older homes tend to have more holes and cracks uh, and weren't built as airtight as they are today. And so there's a natural flow of air. You might open a window in this, on a nice day, get natural flow of air in and out of the house. But in our soundproof studios, that's not an option. The room has to be airtight to be soundproof. So therefore we need some sort of system to bring fresh air in and take the stale air out. So if you haven't thought about this, this is a huge mistake that you might make. I made it myself, put it in the ventilation system a year later, and it's much healthier in my room now. This said, you do need to think about how you're gonna do this. The solution that I usually recommend for people is to use a ERV, Energy Recovery Ventilator, or HRV, depending on your climate. And what this system does is it's a fan and it has a core, as you can see in this diagram here, called the enthalpic core, that will transfer air into your room while also maintaining the uh, temperature and humidity levels of the conditioned air that's coming out of your room. So it's a really cool device. Highly recommend them. They're not overly expensive, uh, but they do add up, especially because we're gonna also have to make sure that, that the air that's coming in and out of your studio is also soundproof. So that means building a baffle box, and baffle boxes require some technical skill and design work, but basically we build these boxes so that the fresh air that's coming in goes through the box, through the maze, and sound will not come through that box because it's going through a bunch of different angles. And then also the box is wide enough so that the airflow is slow enough so that you don't hear the air coming into the vent. We've all heard when our HVAC system kicks on and in certain homes with smaller vents, you can hear the air actually just going flowing through the, the vent pipes. And in a soundproof studio, you certainly don't wanna hear air flowing through your uh, ventilation system. So all of that is part of the design uh, and something I think about when I'm working with my clients and designing soundproof studios for them. So those are the five biggest mistakes that I can think of right now. There's definitely a few other ones, but those really stand out with what I've seen in our community and the people I work with. So make sure to keep those in mind as you're building your own DIY soundproof studio and figure out ways to make sure that you do not fall into the trap of making those mistakes. I will say that uh, you may have mentioned the word client a few times. I keep this kind of behind the scenes, but I do work with people one-on-one -on -one in designing building plans, going through the entire process with them, helping them order supplies, know how many supplies to get, all the things I talked about through my consulting program. So if you're interested in that, you can always go to soundproofyourstudio.com and book a soundproof clarity call to, to learn more about that with me. Um, for everyone else, if that's not something you're interested in, you can always go to that free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop and watch another free resource I'm giving to you just all about how to design and build your soundproof home recording studio. I want to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart here for watching. This channel has been uh, my little baby the last few years, and it's been a lot of fun seeing it grow slowly but strong, you know, with a good community of you guys out there. Um, so I appreciate all of you watching and uh, commenting and asking questions, and we're all learning and building better studios because of it. So I'll see you all next week, and thanks again.